Yeah, well, it's, it's actually interesting. So firstly, I didn't want to write the book. And if somebody else was willing to write it, I wouldn't have written the book. But everybody that I spoke to in the sales influencer world went, nobody's going to buy a book on introverted selling, right? Because who would want a book that's, you know, on selling if you're an introvert, everyone, you know, in the introverted world is trying to avoid it. And I was like, well, you know, I know a fair bit about marketing. And when there is an underserved market, like no, there are no books out there for introverted salespeople. And there are literally thousands out there for extroverts or people that believe that every book is written for an extrovert there has to be some people that were interested but yeah. I mean it, it came because I'd been talking about the book needed to be written for so long that it was starting to get embarrassing that it, I, I didn't just write it myself because I mean my backstory is you know a lot of people see me on on stage speaking at events and they look at me as I am today and they're like oh it's easy for you you know you're, you're, you're extroverted you just got that natural gift of gab and I think that happens a lot anytime you see someone that's successful we it, introverts tend to project extroversion on them right it doesn't matter that Zig Ziglar was was introverted or Jeb Blunt is introverted. Like we again, we never ask those questions because we just like to assume extroverted and we never think anything out of it. So for me, I mean, my backstory is, you know, I had a reading speed of a sixth grader in late high school. You know, I had a horrible acne. And, you know, luckily enough, I got diagnosed with this thing called Erlen syndrome. But basically what that means is I put on a funny pair of glasses that have got colored lenses and miraculously I can learn to read. Now, I, I couldn't read like everyone else, but I could start the process of learning to read. So, you know, I hustled through, you know, high school to, and I got into the top 20% of my state. I mean, I was exhausted, mate. I had no idea what I wanted to do. I was just, you know, and because of that, I just knew that, you know, if I had gone to university, I just, I wouldn't have had that right mindset to just push through. And I mean, two years of being seen as the slow kid, horrible acne and, you know, cut follow funny lenses didn't exactly build my confidence up either. Right. I, there's a photo I show in my stage presentations of me with at my sister's wedding with horrible acne. And I'm like, there's nothing I could do about this face. I literally give people two seconds. I, I warn them. I'm like, here's the photo, click off and let's move on. And everyone laughs. And I'm like, yeah, you literally get in two seconds. But basically what happened is I took a job at a real estate agency. And I, I mean, I wasn't the guy out selling. I was the guy in the back office doing data entry with a look on my face. Like, don't speak to me. I'm, I'm here to find myself for the year. It's a great face for phone sales. So. Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but still wouldn't be doing the phone sales, right? Like, there's no way. Like, I just wanted to just have a quiet job where, and, you know, I would have been really happy with that job, mate. Like, if 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 what happened next didn't happen, that is probably where I would be today. And, gosh, I'm so happy what happened happened, but that I would have probably never known any better. But what happened was my manager comes in about three weeks into that job, and he's like, Matt, I'm so sorry, but they've just decided to close down this office. You're out of a job. And I'm like, I mean, this is Australia at Christmas time. It's like summer at the same time. So here I am, you know, we're about to go on holidays. Like it, the whole country goes on holidays from the 20th of December to the 15th or 20th of January. And I've got no work. And there's no way I'm going home to my dad who broke his back 80 hours a week to support the family and say, sorry, dad, I'm out of a job. So I pulled out the classifieds and I literally looked for jobs. And there were three jobs listed. And there are all these things called commission only sales roles. And I'm like, well, I've got no option. So I just picked up the phone and I called all three and I got three interviews. I was pretty excited, you know, that I was able to do that. And then I went to all three interviews and I got three jobs and I was like, all right, something's funny here. And then, you know, I remember going, I accepted a job in B2B sales, you know, selling telecommunications. And, you know, literally they gave me the job in B2B because they said I had potential, but it was literally because I was the only person that came in a suit. Everyone else was just wearing casual. I mean, it was the only suit I owned. It was a disgusting looking suit, but, you know, it was what I had. But I remember going into my first day of training and my manager saying, you know, we just have this philosophy. We throw mud up against the wall and we see what sticks, which sounds great until you realize you're the mud, right? So there I am, five days product training, not a single second of sales training, and I get thrown on this road called Sydney Road in Melbourne, Australia. It's like a thousand doors on each side. And they're all these like junky little stores. And I go to walk in the first door and I'm like, no one's actually told me what to, to do. I have no idea what to say. So I take a deep breath, I walk in, and luckily I was politely told to leave. Shortly after that, I was sworn at. Then my favorite was always when people used to say, why don't you just go get a real job? I mean, that was the only job I could get, right? But door after door, this happened until I got to my 93rd door where I made my first sale. And I remember I made, I made about 70 bucks. And I, I remember thinking to myself, this is great, but I've got to do this again tomorrow and the next day and the next day. And I mean, that wasn't okay. And I think a lot of the door-to-door -door sellers, people that are listening, they do one of two things. They either grind it out and they hustle through it. And they're like, oh, it's a numbers game. It's a numbers game. Or they give up, which is what 18 of the 20 people in my training group did the next day. 
And what I did, it was different. What I said to myself is I'm like, all right, the year's going to suck if I have to do it this way. So I'm going to decide that sales is a system. So what I did is I went looking for it. And it's not like I could pick up a Brian Tracy or a Zig Ziglar book. So what I did is I, t- I typed in YouTube sales system and all these videos came up. And I literally spent eight hours out in the field applying what I learned and eight hours back home practicing. Weekends, I'd spend like 16 hours practicing. And that just went on, but I got better. You know, soon it was like 78 doors, then it was 45 doors, then it was 31, 18, nine. I got it down to three doors on average, I'd make a sale. And I remember it was about six weeks in, my manager pulls me aside. And I was, I mean, I was the quiet guy. I'd pass my paperwork in downstairs. I'd go upstairs. I'd listen to all the boisterous salespeople talk about how hard the market was getting. And he's like, Matt, we're kind of blown away by this. We just got the national sales report and it looks like you're the number one salesperson in the company. Now that happened within six weeks. And this was a a company that employed thousands of salespeople. I mean, they called themselves the largest sales and marketing company in the Southern hemisphere. So to go from being terrified to sell to being the number one. Now, of course, what happened though, is they went, oh, you're a great salesperson. You can manage. So they gave me a team. They all quit in 24 hours because I was a terrible manager. (laughs) <laughs> and so what happened was I, I taught myself how to manage watching YouTube videos. And anyway, got promoted seven times in a year, ended up starting up my own business. Fast forward a decade, I was responsible for five multi-million dollar success stories. But then when I got to the US, I started teaching people what I did to be successful in business. And I talked about differentiation, niche marketing. And then I, before I got into sales, I'd tell my personal story. And I'd have all these introverts afterwards come up and go, Matt, I had no idea as an introvert that sales was even possible for me. And so I started telling everyone to write this book on introverted selling because with my reading issues, there's no way I was going to do it. And then I ended up working with a ghostwriter, right? So I I worked with a client, you know, he was making 27,000 a year. And I literally took him from that. So within four months, he he made $120,000. The next year he made 200. And he was like, Matt, you've got to put this stuff into a book. So begrudgingly, I was like, all right, let's do this. And we put together the book, you know, a year later, it sold 25,000 copies. It's been translated in 10 languages. And, you know, it's listed by book authorities, the number two book ever written for introverts. So it's been quite a journey, mate. But you know, in truth, I should never have created the book. I should never have been in sales. But, you know, it was just luck that kind of got me to where I am today. So what do you, I love it. I love it. And I'm, I, I have like 12, you've like said words that I say, and you're from a different country. And it's like, <laughs> You're speaking our language, my man. So love it. Um, what do you What do you say to that guy? Because obviously you managed and led teams and built organizations. When it, when a recruit sits in front of you, you know you probably ended up being the guy throwing stuff at the wall and being like, "You're an introvert. I'm an introvert. You could do this. I did it." You know what I mean? Like, but how do you have that conversation when the guy sits with you and is like, "Oh, I didn't realize this was sales or commission only. I'm just not a sales guy." How do you how do you talk to that guy? Like what 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 things do you say to him? How do you change his tune? Or can you change his tune? Like what is that? Well, it's interesting. So I actually one of the things that I got promoted so much for is that I met my retention rate for that mud up against the wall that I had no control over when I was working for the organization was much much higher. And the reason for that is what I what I started to do is initiate product, not just product training, but sales training into the five days training that people had. But you know, the biggest thing is that when people say to me that they are not, you know, they're not built to be salespeople, you know, I, I explain, you know, I, you know, neither was I. And what I discovered is that people have a false perception of what sales is. People think sales is about being able to just have that gift of gab and just be dynamic. So they walk in and somebody says something and they know exactly what to say. It's actually not that. It's about making sure that they have a systematic process that leads to a sale. And a lot of times you can really make sure that you systemize out the way you create rapport. You can systemize out the way you tell stories. You, When somebody gives you an objection, you can reframe those into, you can do what I call an objection handling cushion. I perfectly understand. Last thing I want to do is waste any of your time, however, and then move into a story. So right throughout the process, it's something that you can systemize and practice. So when somebody says that to me, one of the things that I would say is you're 100% right if you expect to just grab a product today and go and sell tomorrow. But if you're willing to embrace a sales system, if you're willing to spend time with me learning how to process, how to take 
step by step through a sales process, which of course we're willing to show you how to do, the first thing you realize is it's actually not as hard as you think. The second thing you realize is you don't have to do any of those bulldog closes and those the, you know those pushy techniques that you see a lot of used car salesmen and insurance salespeople because they shouldn't be doing that anyway. And the third thing you'll realize is that door-to-door sales is by far the most important step in any career success. Because if you can't sell yourself, good luck getting a big job one day. If you can't sell yourself, good luck starting a small business. I mean, I think in the book Zero to One, they say that if your business just you know consists of just you and your computer, I look around, if you don't see any salespeople, you're the salesperson, right? I mean, that's why in the book Rich Dad, Poor Dad, it's like, if you, even if you have to go and sell Amway, go sell Amway. Well, door-to-door sales is like trial by fire, but in truth, if I had to do 93 doors every single day to get one sale, there was no way that I would be okay with that. But if you can make a sale every three days, it's pretty fun. So if you learn a system, you'll do amazingly well. And in truth, daughter or sales is one of those jobs that you can make phenomenal money straight out of high school. And so few careers offer that promise. I love that. So it's interesting when you, when you lay it out to the introvert, I think here's where the extrovert doesn't correlate the two. An introvert tends to like things kind of in their order, in their system. It's like, I do X, Y, Z, and I get this. Like, And I think a lot of, like, my problem is sometimes I'm like, I don't say the same thing. Like, I, I just want to, like, wing it. I just want to make a friend. I want to connect. I want to talk. I want to throw down, right? Yeah. And I think if you were to simply say, guys, can you say this? Can you say this? Can you say this in this order with this tone? Can you tell this story with a beginning, middle, and end and have a, you know, some... Can you, can, can you learn how to tell a story the right way? And, you know, if I told you the story, can you repeat it and say it the way I said it? Well, yeah, I could do that. Like, okay, then why couldn't you sell? Like, I think the way that you just broke it down of like, it can be learned and it is a system and there is a step to it and you can be trained. I think, like you said, is people have this wrong mindset or frame around direct sales or you know, their, their personality associated to it. And I love, I love how you frame that. So thank you. So what, well, I'll go one step further though. If you don't like what I'll say is an introvert will actually outsell an extrovert when they do that. And I agree. I would agree, I would agree hundred percent. Yeah. And a lot of people don't know that though. I mean, like, you know, it's not new stuff. I mean, Brian Tracy, who's an extrovert will tell you the top 10% of all sales performers have a planned presentation. The bottom 80% just say whatever comes out of their mouth. Well, if you think about planning, I mean, that's an introvert strength, right? The extrovert loves to wing it. So they're going to move away from plan process. But of course, the reason why everyone thinks an extrovert does a better job is while the top 10% is probably mostly introverted, the rest of the top of, of, of the groups are all extroverts love bragging about how great they are it's exactly exactly so yeah. it's a huge issue, but you look at, you know, Jeffrey Gittemore, who I, I know is a, a, is a friend of yours and he's a friend of mine. I mean, he's an extrovert, but he gravitated to process. Dr- Brian Tracy gravitated to process. So the thing you I, I would always say is that a process will always win over somebody that's winging it. Now, an introvert and an extrovert can both learn a process and a system, but an extrovert's benefit of being able to wing it when they don't have a process is an advantage at the start, but a disadvantage when they're trying to perfect the art. The great thing with an introvert is, let's face it, we kind of suck at selling without a planned process. But with a planned process, we kind of hold on to it for dear life because without it, we're going to have a really tough time. And because of that, it almost becomes a discipline for us that we just keep trying to perfect. And you know, planned presentations will always win out. And if you're focused on always delivering the same thing and changing one thing at a time to continually improve it, eventually you're going to be the best in your company. You're going to be the best selling the whatever item, service, or product that you're actually trying to represent. I like that. I like that a lot. Do you, uh, you know, so we, we put like, we're a training company. So we, we, we actually like, I have guys right now in Atlanta. I have a guy in Charlotte that are filming companies processes. So like one of the things that we do is we help people put a training system together so they can duplicate themselves more because, you know, I watch over and over and over again. And that, that's like how my company started. I was like, man, there's like no training. Like I go to big companies and they're just like, oh yeah, he shadowed me for a day. And then he kind of goes out there and figures it out. And, you know, and they don't have a way to duplicate that process or, you know, cater to the introvert. That's like, just give me the playbook and like, I'll do it. You just don't have any resource or playbook for me to do. And you're expecting me just to wing this. And that is not in my DNA. And I found that 
the more we've helped systematically, you know, we consult a lot of businesses and uh, there's one on this Instagram live right now, Jefferson, and he was in my office yesterday. It's a big window company. And he was like, can we map out the training system better? Because he felt like there was a bunch of holes in it. And I was like, okay, let's fill that in so that worst case scenario, you have a crappy manager that doesn't want to spend any time with the sales guy. You at least have your online training platform and resources to give your guy to where if he wants to take it upon himself and the introvert tends to want to take it upon themselves to learn it and, and, and study it. Like you said, they, they tend to be a top higher performers once they, you know, maybe have a slower start, but they have a more consistent long-term because they've said, I understand why I do what I do. Not just, man, that one worked all of a sudden. I don't know what happened, but it just, they, they, they've just been buying this week. I'm just going on fire. It's like, no, I can tell you why. And that's the system, right? Absolutely. I mean, what's what's interesting about that is a lot of people will, like you, you say to an extrovert, why are you having a bad week this week? And it could be because they had a fight with their girlfriend or their boyfriend, or they had an f- argument with their parents, or, you know, they just got a more, you know, they just, I had one commission only salesperson, super extroverted. And he's like, he, he went from making the most amazing level of sales to almost nothing. And it was because he bought a brand new car and he was stressed out about the payment that he had to make for the car every month. I mean, he earned so much more than that. It was never a problem, but this was his first, you know, luxury vehicle. And he was like freaking out about that. And just that playing on his head had such a substantial effect. I mean, for me, I could have just come out of the world's worst situation. And because in a lot of ways, I script what I say and plan what I say, you know, day after day, I'll deliver the exact same outcomes. And now, by the way, I know you just use the word script. So a lot of people are going to go, oh, no script. Well, firstly, all the people you watch on TV are reading from scripts as well. Every movie you've watched. And the reason why they sound so natural and comfortable is not because they've picked up the script and they're reading it right now, or they read it yesterday and they're delivering it today. It's because they've rehearsed it. They've practiced it. They've embodied the part. 